good morning, um, Professor Wallace. Good morning. Thank you for taking the time to answer some questions about Picasso and Van Gogh. Sure. Are you familiar with um, Starry Night? Yes. What do you think about Starry Night? Uh, well, I think that it's a quite a remarkable work of art, and um, I've had the good fortune of seeing it in person several times at the Museum of Modern Art in New York, and uh, it's an incredibly emotional piece that is very inspiring uh, to me as an artist, uh, but then also just as a viewer, there's something about it, uh, its rhythm, its uh, use of swirling lines and imagery, um, that has just sort of a, a dreamlike almost feeling to it um, that I find very soothing, very calming. And um, what about The Beggar by Picasso? Mm -hmm. Yes, I'm familiar with that piece as well. What, what do you think about um, that picture? Uh, it's full of melancholy. Um, the colors that are used, the depiction of the, uh, the man himself um, is... Uh, very heartfelt. I think that it um, is a very strong emotional picture and affects you um, on a very sort of visceral kind of level. Okay. Um, that is good. That is good. Uh, <clears throat> Picasso, okay, now what the use of blue, this is the reason why I picked those two pictures. I okay. like the way that Picasso and Van Gogh use blue. Mm -hmm. How do you think, what do you think about their uses of blue in those two pictures? Uh, well, they're different, I would say. Um, in the Van Gogh picture, it is more of a naturalistic depiction in that I think that the um, blue is me meant to represent the night sky, um, and it's a comforting sort of blue. It's a blue that we're familiar with, um, whereas the blue in... The Picasso picture has been desaturated. It's washed out. It's uh, you know it gives a much more um, sort of destitute or uh, you know sort of feeling um, because of the way that the uh, the tones have been neutralized or sort of grayed out, um, and it has a much different emotional resonance for that reason. Okay, thank you. Uh, what do you think about Picasso's blue period and what it meant to him? and us? Uh, well, I think that, um, you know, he was attempting to create a certain kind of mood and feeling across a series of pictures uh, depicting, you know, sort of human want, loneliness, uh, sadness, emotions that, you know, could be conveyed with sort of the blues, you know, that idea, I think. Um, you know, because blue isn't always a melancholy color, but the way that he depicted it um, you know, really creates a, a sense of strong emotion, and I think that um, that reflected something in his inner character that he was trying to express. You know, there is something to be said that, like, every painting is a, something of a self-portrait, mm -hmm. so I think that some of those emotions certainly must have come from, you know, Picasso's own inner self, and in terms of how it affects us or what it means to us, I think um, even today, some you know, hundred odd years removed from when those pictures were made, there's still a feeling of um, sadness that's pervasive in those pictures that affects us today. The issues that he was dealing with, you know, human loneliness, depression, uh, you know, um, homelessness, joblessness. Um, the topics Picasso went through that. Uh, well, no, I think that those topics, though, that he covers okay. in those paintings in the Blue Period, we still relate to and understand yes, sir. today. Yes, sir. Did Did um, Van Gogh have a parallel period or a Blue Period or any type of thing like that? Uh, well, his early works were um, very before he became a really colorful painter. His early works were very traditional, um, and I guess I would say he almost went through uh, sort of a brown period. Okay. Um, his okay. work was very dark, moody, gloomy, mm -hmm. um, and not nearly as bright and animated as we think of the sort of, you know, Van Gogh that everyone knows from Sunflowers or, you know, pictures of uh, Fields, his portraits. Okay. Thank you. Van Gogh's post-impression. What is, um, what, how would you define Van Gogh's post-impression era 
or time? Uh, well, it was a time of transition, essentially. The, the post-impressionists were reacting against the impressionist art that had come before. Um, in some ways, as a, an, a negative reaction, you know, wanting to avoid that sort of style or subject matter. Um, but then in other ways, embracing, I think, you know, the breakthrough of Impressionism. Um, Van Gogh, in particular, though, I think was um, just a very idiosyncratic artist. He kind of followed his own path um, and, you know, certainly uh, had influences that informed his work. Uh, but I would say that, you know, he was truly kind of a singular artist in that regard um, compared to some of the other post-Impressionists. Okay. Thank you. The diff what do you think about the differences between Van Gogh's and Picasso's social lives? Uh, well, I would say that um, in terms of the kind of people that they were, they were very different. Uh, Van Gogh was very insular, quiet, um, didn't easily make friends, very socially reserved, um, religiously conservative. Um, and it was difficult, I think, for him to form human relationships, whereas Picasso was kind of the opposite. He was sort of a social sponge um, and was very outgoing, had a very high opinion of himself and his own work, um, whereas Van Gogh was a much more humble person. Mm -hmm. uh, if, to all accounts, Picasso was kind of a brash, cocky mm -hmm. sort of uh, person. With entourages and things like that? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, and embraced fame and celebrity in a way that um, Van Gogh never had the opportunity to because his work, you know, uh, never really sold during his lifetime. Well, no, we're only comparing Van Gogh. Right now, we're comparing Van Gogh and Picasso. But is there any other artist that, that you know, rivaled uh, Picasso in his fame and, you know... Uh, for his era, I would say probably not. Maybe Henri Matisse mm -hmm. um, in terms of critical reception and sales, um, although I don't think that he embraced celebrity quite the same way that Picasso did. Um, the one person that I would compare to Picasso, I guess, in terms of um, celebrity status, um, the various... Uh, modes in which they worked, um, and, uh, you know, having an incredible amount of output as an artist would be Andy Warhol. Mm -hmm. I, th I thought the same thing. When, when I was asking you the question, I thought about Andy Warhol. Okay. But, you know, but I, I, but I think that, um, would you agree that Picasso set the standard? for a uh, artist? Yes, I think so. I think that he was kind of created um, that uh, sort of cult of personality in the 20th century um, that elevated an artist beyond just sort of art world status to, you know, kind of larger cultural status. Okay, thank you. Um, did Van Gogh commit suicide or was he murdered? Well, uh, I recently read a book uh, that explained uh, that new evidence had come to light that he was accidentally shot and murdered, um, and covered it up so as to protect the young children who had perpetrated the crime against him. Um, but apparently, it, because of the, the entry point of the gunshot wound, um, and, you know, sort of the way in which he actually passed, it would have been impossible for him to, to shoot himself at that particular angle. Um, and then there's other anecdotal evidence that suggests that he, he kind of covered up the crime to protect the children who accidentally shot him. Um, it would have been against Van Gogh's nature to commit suicide because of his strict religious upbringing. He would have considered that a cardinal sin. It's not something you, it would have been in his character, um, in my opinion. Okay. Now, as an artist, um, um, have you sold more than one painting? Yeah, yeah. I have. I've been fortunate to sell yeah. more than one painting. So what do you think about the, the fact that Van Gogh only sold one picture? Is it something that, is it because he couldn't part with his work, or was it because his work wasn't uh, I think, thought after? I think that it was his work was just ahead of its time, to a certain extent. Um, people weren't quite ready for the bright colors, uh, the expressive use of the materials. Um... And I think it was also his own personality made it very difficult for him to deal with potential patrons or people who might be interested in buying his work. He he bartered his work a lot. He you know would, okay. he would trade it um, to be able to afford to live or for supplies or for food. Um, hello for alcohol. 
Um, unfortunately for alcohol, yeah, uh, yeah. he was an alcoholic. Um, but I, I think it was kind of a combination of things. His work was ahead of its time. And uh, also his abrasive personality, I think, made it difficult for people to, you know, want to pursue him as patrons. Okay. Now, um, Picasso and Van Gogh had different social lives. Is it true that they both experienced depression? Um, from what I understand, yes, that is true. Um, certainly with Van Gogh, it's pretty well documented. Um that he, you know, suffered from what we would probably think of as bipolar disorder today or manic depression. Um, and with Picasso, I would say it was more of, um, not necessarily depression, but like sort of a brooding personality mm -hmm. um, and obsessive personality. Maybe, but, but maybe not necessarily what we would think of today as like a, a depressive disorder. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, I think I have... Um Two more questions. Okay. Uh, what do you know about the women uh, of Picasso and Van Gogh? Uh, well, Van Gogh's women um, would mostly have been uh, people that he was depicting that he had some kind of personal relationship with, um, but they were not necessarily objects of desire, um, whereas in Picasso's realm. Um, he certainly painted all of the women in his life, and uh, I actually saw a really interesting exhibition one time in New York uh, at the um, Metropolitan Museum of Art called Picasso's Weeping Women, and it was about uh, how you could sort of follow the progress of, uh, in portraiture, of his um, sort of tumultuous relationship with each woman that he was involved with, mm -hmm. and they would start off as pictures where they were depicted as sort of beautiful smiling, bright colors, mm -hmm. uh, and then eventually they all ended up being in a, in a picture where they were crying, their faces broken apart, almost uh, kind of monster-like, yeah. um, and so he sort of lived his relationships through his art to a certain extent. Uh, that content um, of his personal life was definitely in his artwork. Do you think that that was part of his appeal? Um, I, I think that in a way that it was that uh, whether people were aware of it or not, um, the, the, the honesty with which he depicts the subjects, even in his abstracted style, um, is, I think, something that uh, people could relate to, mm -hmm. you know? I don't want to say appeal, because the, the pictures aren't necessarily appealing, mm -hmm. um, you know, pictures of weeping women, um, but that... Um, there was a certain amount of uh, autobiography in there that I think the people were interested in. Yes, sir. Okay, um, you did you have, do you have a favorite between Picasso and Van Gogh? Oh wow! Uh, I guess I be hard to choose. I like them both for different reasons. Mm -hmm. um, I would probably say that if I had to choose one over the other, I would choose Picasso. Really. Mm -hmm. That's interesting because I would I was I like Van Gogh. Okay. Because you know, um, because Van Gogh, you know, I, I think that there's a little bit of Picasso in me and a little bit of Van Gogh in me. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, I've been solitaire, and I just I just kind of like my heart goes out to Van Gogh. Yes. A little bit more. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, I guess I think I'm on a personal level. I relate more to Van Gogh than to Picasso. Mm -hmm. Like as a you know, a human being. Yes, sir. Artistically, I would say that um, Van Gogh's path was so singular that his influence is hard to absorb without it just being uh, something of a ripoff, maybe, of Van Gogh. Whereas Picasso's work is so varied and so diverse mm -hmm. that he's a little bit easier to absorb as an influence as an artist, I think. Um, but certainly as a man, I um, am less respectful than I am of what Van Gogh sort of represented or endured in his lifetime. Well, um, Professor, thank you very much. Just one last thing. Could you please look into the camera okay. and tell just a brief, you know, uh, history of yourself and, you know, where you went to school and, you know, how you love art and you know, anything like that? Sure. Uh, my name is Scott Wallace, and um, I have a bachelor's and a master's degree in fine art. Um, I got my bachelor's degree from Coker College in Hartsville, South Carolina, and then my graduate degree from the School of the Art Institute of Chicago in Chicago, Illinois. 
Um, I'm primarily an abstract painter, but my work veers back and forth between abstraction and realism. And um, I am currently working on a series of illustrations and uh, drawings kind of derived from personal content and um, setting up a new studio um, in my new house, which I'm right, very right. excited about. That sounds exciting. It's very exciting. It is. Well, thank you very much. If you just hit that uh, close button. Okay. Thank you very much. Sure. No problem. Right, my pleasure. It. Well, I'm